everybody. Dave Weiss here from AmokArts.com. Uh, for some time now, people have been asking me about the idea of doing tutorials to show different things that I do. So I decided today I would do a video that would show you about the process that I take to create something. I'm going to show you how I make a t-shirt today for Zazzle.com. I'm going to show you how to do the design, create it, put it into Photoshop, color it, and then I'm going to take you through the process of actually getting it online. Uh, you may not want to do this, but you know, you can pick up different techniques along the way. Um, so basically what I did was I started off last night sitting around watching TV and I started to sketch. I always sketch in blue pencil and then I ink usually in Sharpie. I keep them in these uh, these sketchbooks like this. Uh, they're just real simple sketchbooks, um, but it's really nice. It keeps all your drawings together in one place so you're ready for them uh, when you want to use them. Uh, and so what I did was I start off by creating this design. See him there? This is uh, the Lion of the Tribe of Judah, and I decided I was going to make a t-shirt design out of it. I might possibly do a post or some other things, but for now, uh, we're just going to look at doing a t-shirt. So, from this point, I scanned the drawing. Okay, basically here we're getting it ready to scan it. You can see the image coming onto the screen now. I use a flatbed scanner. I said earlier about using blue pencil. That's because blue pencil doesn't normally show up on the scanner. So now that we've got it on the scanner, it's, it's into the image. We now have it in Photoshop. I cropped it. And now I'm going to turn it the right direction. And uh, we're going to select the black so that I can color in that. Um, and we're going to put that on a different layer. Now, I wanted to not have the whole thing be black, so as soon as I was done, uh, t I took my paint bucket and painted it black, but then I took a paintbrush and started going around the edges, and you can see I added a lot of color. Now here we're going to make it bigger. Um, oh, that's right, we're putting the line work on in a separate step. Now, uh, I put a, a, a border around it on a different layer, and then I combined those two layers together. Now we're changing the size a little bit. I want to make it 9 by 12 a standard printing size, so that'll work for that. Um, and then I selected the polygonal lasso tool, uh, which is up in the upper left hand corner. And you basically just click around on your lines and that selects the area that you want to color first. I added a different layer for the colors, put the yellow in, and now I took a paintbrush tool and I'm going around the edges and shadowing it, adding a little bit of shadowing, not a whole lot. And now I'm going in with a smaller brush to put a little bit darker shadow in, a little more detail. And uh, basically you see what's coming together here. We're going for a cartoony style so we don't need a lot of shadowing and painting. Okay, now I'm going around the large rays and uh, selecting those again using that polygonal lasso tool and uh, basically I'm just going around each of the large shapes. You'll see uh, what I've selected pretty soon. Um, it takes a little bit of time to do this. This is time lapse. It's quite a bit faster than it actually happens, but um, you get the idea and you won't have to sit here watching me click and click and click. Um, basically all you do is line this uh, little tool up over it and just keep clicking until you've selected all the areas. If you're familiar with using an airbrush from the good old days, basically this is your frisket. You're just cutting out areas that you're going to paint. Um, and now I've just finished selecting them. We're going to start off by dropping a yellow in once again. And now I'm going to go for a really fat brush and a dark orange color shading around the inside, light orange around the outside to try and make it work. Um, you know, try and make it look sort of fiery and all this. We're doing this. This is the Lion of the Tribe of Judah. It's an expression of Christ from the book of Revelation showing Christ and his power. So uh, it's the idea of this is the, the triumphant hero Jesus that comes along to defeat this enemy Satan forever. Uh, we're going through and doing these little uh, flamey looking things right now. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what they are. It just sort of highlights into this part of the main. Um, and uh, they're going to be red when they're done, but you notice I've already painted in here. Now if I just try to drop the red in with the paint bucket, what will happen is it'll fill in all the orange and then you'll have to go through again and fill out all the yellow, but I don't want to do that. I just want to go one shot and done. So as soon as I select them all, I hit delete and that deletes out that area. It cuts the area out and then you just fill it in with the paint bucket using red uh, and then I'm putting a little bit of shadow in using a darker red tone, actually two darker red tones. 
And uh, I, I already selected these uh, little purple things ahead of time, these curly cues ahead of time, so you didn't have to watch me click around them again. But basically, once I fill them in with this light purple, then I go back with a darker purple and shadow it using the brush tool. Same thing that I usually do for shading. Uh, for some reason, every once in a while, I think when my computer gets tired, it starts to flash in and out like that. So please excuse that. I, I stopped it and made it stop. But um, now, this one is a little different. We're going in now and doing these sort of checkerboard pieces. Um, and if you'll notice, I'm, I'm being very careful around the areas at the outside, but when I get toward the inside where I already have it colored, I'm just sort of clicking over that. That's because this is going to be on a separate layer. I'm going to put another layer and I'm going to put it behind the color layer so that for that reason, I don't have to be real careful about clicking around all those little curly cues and all that stuff because we're going to put this in behind the piece. So that should work pretty well, and you'll see it in just a second here. We're going to make that green, and then we're going to bring in a blue shadowing behind it, uh, and then put that on the bottom side of all the uh, all the rays there, and that'll sort of give it a nice shading technique. And uh, you know, again, we're going for basically every color in the box on this one, uh, making this a very bright and bold kind of character. Now we're going to select the whole thing because I want the background to be a darker green color and then I'm going to run a blue around the edges to give it kind of a, a neat kind of deep feel. Um, lastly now we need to go in and do the details of the face. So we're going to start off going back to the layer that has all the face colors in. We're going to cut those uh, the eyes out for example. Go in there and fill that area in with the green and then put some yellow and dark green highlights in. That will really uh, make those eyes pop as you can see. Now we cut out the mouth and did the same thing. Put a dark red color in there to sort of uh, show a deep open mouth uh, and a red tongue. I'm making his tongue red because again we're going for really bright colors here. No no pastels or anything like that. And then just some shadows and highlights. Lastly, we're going to cut around the teeth uh, and the highlight on the nose. Uh, we're going to cut that out once again. We're still on that same color layer. Uh, you'll notice it turns green. That's because there's a green layer behind it. And then once we paint it white, we're just going to add a few, uh, few shadows to the teeth. Um, then go in there and put the highlights in the eyes. And our image is, is pretty close to being done here. We're saving it. Um, and then I wanted to do one other thing. To give the, the lines a little bit of highlight and depth, I went and selected that line and added a filter uh, and effects called be Bevel and Emboss, which really shaped it out there. Um, that's about it for the drawing. And now we're going to add in the signature of muckarts.com down in the corner, because I try to put that on all my pieces. And that's about it. After all this was done, I saved it as a PNG file. Zazzle.com requires PNG files to load. Uh, it's something that you can easily do. Just hit Save As, and it brings in Photoshop brings up a whole bunch of different categories. PNG is one of those. I usually use a 300 DPI, which seems to work really well. But again, uh, they have all their specifications on there for whatever you want to make. In this case, a PNG file, 300 uh, DPI, about 12 inches wide, is probably about the best way to go. Now from here we're going to go into Zazzle.com. Now you'll have to set up your own account before you do this. I already have an account, so I'm just going to move forward. I've gone through, I've selected the merchandise that I want to do. I want to use this long sleeve t-shirt, uh, this uh, jersey type of shirt, and uh, now I'm uploading the design. It takes a little bit to upload it, but um, I think you'll begin to see how it all comes together here. We have the PNG format again, and uh, it's going in there, and it should come out looking really great takes a minute or two to get in there. Again, Zazzle.com, they give you 10% of, of the total price of the item is yours to keep. And uh, that's a pretty good deal. You can set your price higher, but for me, I think that the prices are about right at, the, at getting the 10%. So that's what I do personally. You just click the button that says make it, and you do it. And now it's making me sign in. And uh, it makes you put in some descriptive copy uh, to let, you, let people know about your design. And uh, then it also asks you for keywords, and I'm putting those in in just a second. Keywords are very important um, because keywords help people find your design, so it's important to put them in. Also, it'll ask you to select public categories. I usually took two. Um, there's an opportunity for two there. I usually take them both, and occasionally you have to mess around with it a little bit to get them right. And then finally, when you're done, you hit post. 
Well, that's about it. All you need to do from this point on is there's some different things in there you can use to promote your design um, and get it out there. So give it a try and uh, let me know how it works. God bless.